Hello my brothers and sisters of the Order, welcome back to the Order, I am Celtic Templar, and yes, welcome back to another weapons review video, and today we are actually taking a look at a Hunway style Viking hatchet. Now, when I bought this, apparently it stated that it was a Viking throwing weapon. No, this is not a throwing axe. Uh, this is a Viking throwing axe. This is a Francisca. This is a hatchet, or in this case, utility tool. Now, I want to put this out here, there is a huge difference between throwing axe, utility axe, throwing axe, utility axe, huge difference. Now, this actually has the, uh, well, historical style hatchet-like design, in which I kind of bought this because I wanted them to get a good axe that looks more historically accurate. I know, it looks really awesome and such, and I'm pretty much glad I got my hands on this. Because apparently I found out that many sites don't sell them right now because they're kind of out of stock. So, yeah. Now, its overall length is 17 inches. Its blade is around 3 inches. And including its weight is around 1 pound in... Or 1.2 pounds, I want to say. So, yeah. And most of its point of balance is all the way towards the head. Now, this gives us a good explanation of how dangerous this thing is with the weaponry. Now, I hear many people already saying and asking, uh, but Templar, doesn't this weapon look a little puny? It doesn't look like it will do much damage. Well, that's what you might think. However, Skullagrim had actually done a video on uh, a comparison on the axes, especially when it came to the axe blows he had done on some very annoying leather. And the thing is, I had to explain to y'all, uh, the biggest axe blade doesn't do the most damage. In fact, it's a small axe like this, a hatchet design, that of which can easily do, well, puncture through the body. Meaning, it has more, even if you're going to wear mail and gambeson, guess what? This small head has a more point design friction. Meaning, it's going to do a type of point attack through the human body. Meaning, in fact, just imagine if you get, well, whacked at it's not going to go through the mail or the gamazon, but what's going to happen is it's going to have a shock wave type, or I guess you could call it a, uh, <laughs> you're, technically your body won't be able to stop this. It's kind of like getting hit at the side with a heavy, well, object, and that's what it is. Now, a major comparison of that could be with this dang X, which I have to explain to y'all. Uh, now, this is not a good comparison, but I do have to explain to y'all on how dangerous this thing would be, especially if it was a one-handed weapon. But, here's the thing. If this thing was a two-handed weapon and this thing was a one-handed weapon, this would still be a dangerous weapon more than this, because this is just meant to destroy, uh, well, the outer parts of the body. While in truth, if it wasn't for the weight, this thing would be, well, not that deadly. So. Yeah, that's our major comparison we have to understand. So, what does that mean? Well, it's kind of like this. The more weight you got in the head doesn't mean that it's always the best. But however, it's the way the weapon is shaped is how dangerous it is. And the hatchet is a dangerous weapon. Now, this is a utility ad a type hex, which the reason I call it a utility axe is kind of the obvious. It is a hatchet, which during Viking culture and many cultures in history, not just the Vikings, but many others, they would have actually had, their axe would have actually been their everyday tool. How so? Well, for one, the axe was known to cut wood, and as well, if you're, well, wanting to repair your house, guess what, you're going to need to chop down some trees and start, well, cutting. In doing so, though, you then got the back piece, which is a hammer. That's right, this is a hammer on the back, which is meant to hammer in nails, which I always find this a little hilarious that many people don't realize this. And in such, it's actually stated that the blade itself would also be used to remove the nail if it was ever damaged. So, this is its own type of form. However, there are many versions of hatchets in history. This is a Viking version, so yeah, this is what I have to explain to y'all. There are so many versions of the hatchet, it's not even funny, so yeah. Uh, but
but I'm pretty much betting that many of you are wanting to see the uh, <laughs> weapon go up against the, well, armor and such. Well, alright. First, let's actually take a look at the gambit, shall we? Now I have to explain to you all guys, the Gambeson did do its job incredibly well. However, it was into the form in such that it kind of did not exactly go so well. What do you mean by this? Uh, the weapon did do its job. However, I don't think the Gambeson would have held up that much later on. Especially the person wearing the Gambeson. Because this is technically like, well, uh, having the weapon go through the armor. In other words, the shock of the weapon goes through the armor. Now, uh, I hear many people already asking this, Templar, how can the shock of the weapon go through armor? Well, this can easily be answered with the uh, Greek Copus or the Falcata, which in such, in history, was known to defeat the body underneath the armor, but yet not attack the armor. Meaning, a weapon like this was meant to attack the body, not the armor itself. So, we can see of how dangerous that could be. Now, the thing is though, the Gambeson did prove incredibly well. However, we then go up against LARP armor, that which is used by Epic Armory, as we can see, with me testing it out on the weapon out on it and such. Uh, the thing is, that armor did prove perfect, but I wouldn't actually want to wear that alone, due to the fact that this hatchet could have really just did a number on it, and you don't have to be uh, Einstein to know what happens when a hatchet like this hits something like that type of leather vest. So, non-workable. But, we can then go to the buff coat. Now the buff coat did not give that much resistance, which I can understand why, because this is like, well, defeating this regular part. Now, it did stop somewhat, but the power of this weapon would definitely destroy that person wearing that armor. So, the buff coat, what, if you don't understand, was a type of military-type armor that was used in the ancient Bronze Age. However, it was also then later on used in many parts in Medieval, and including that in many parts of the Iron Age, and all the way leading up to the, uh, well, English Civil War. So, the only reason it was used was actually meant to stop the blows of a sword. However, the blows of maces and axes like this could easily destroy that armor underneath. In other words, destroy the body underneath the armor, you don't need to worry about a thing. So, yeah, that's probably the most horrifying thing we had to understand. Uh, but then, we actually go to the mail. Now, the mail proved tricky, actually. In fact, uh, we did do some damage on it, which... Well, automatically, as y'all can see, uh, a couple of the rings are incredibly damaged here. Like, literally, there's like, I want to say, one, two, three, we got like at least a huge gash right where the axe blade came into the area, and it just did a swiping motion downward, and it just, yeah. However, the male did save this guy, however... Uh, with this axe alone, I don't think this guy would have probably survived. He would have felt the shockwave right through the mail, and in such, he would have probably have broken arm and such. Now, if we can also take a look at the further bottom ends of the mail, for example, uh, where I hit his lower sternum, the mail technically did do its job. Which is his, like, high-quality ring mail, so, yeah, like, this is what you get from 300 bucks worth, so, yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, but as well, also to the round here, uh, apparently the mail didn't exactly, well, do much of a job, for some reason. 
even though I hit like right dead center, yet it did scrape up the mail a little bit. Other than that, I don't see much damage to the mail in general, unless we count the part right here, which this is this devastating type situation of up here. Let me get y'all a little bit more. So you can see my point. Because <laughs> uh, this is just a mess, massive mesh posh. However, the mail, as I stated, did save this person, but it did damage the body. If he was wearing a gamison, it would still hurt underneath and probably leave to a punch of broken arms. Okay, now we had to go to the shield. Now the shield was another thing I had to do. Uh, one major reason why is because of the damage, it did to the damn thing. In fact, our shield right here took major damage to the rim, <laughs> side, the boss, even the side here and such, which it's going to make a loud bang noise when you hear it, which, uh, why don't we go right into the video and you can see why point. Well, as you all can see here, uh, apparently when I tried to, well, take care of the shield in the process, as we could tell, the shield actually did take a number of damage. We, well, hit it with the hammer on this piece right here, the shield boss. Then we technically, as you, as you all saw, struck it up here, and as well struck it with the <laughs> axe blade, and it did a number of damage and it did do a number of damage on this guard rim up here so uh but as y'all can see no edge damage whatsoever so it's surprisingly still workable so apparently all of our said body armor and including our shield didn't help so why don't we go over towards the helmets now shall we now, I know that was a little overboard, but you gotta admit, that was just too damn fun to use it on. And, now then I hear many people already, but Templar, we want to see it go used on helmets. Why didn't you just show the in the helmets? Well, I want to do it, the helmets last. And especially due to the fact that since this was Viking, I decided, well, might as well go with a Viking helmet. However, first, we went with our 18 gauge steel All Best Stuff helmet, which did actually survive in some ways, and did not survive in some ways. So, maybe y'all can see my point very soon, and you will hear the loud bang each time this thing gets whacked at. And this is strong 18 gauge steel, ladies and gentlemen.
All right, uh, here is where we hit with our hammer three times and the hammer end just walloped in it. Uh, now our ax blade did do some damage, especially on the reinforcement rim, but I don't think this will be enough damage. So, uh, Oh, but man, the interior padding, if this guy did get whacked with this axe, uh, I don't think it would have ended well for him. As we can see, there's that massive impact of the axe blade. And over here, I'm trying to get this in frame. I don't know if y'all can see this because the paint is chipping away on this thing. The interior uh, blackened paint, and it is just a massive wallop in this cranial cavity. So this guy might actually die from this. And these are Roman helmets, so they would have historically not had that much padding inside. So oh, this guy might be dead. Moving on. Okay, now that one, down the board, straight off, that was gruesome. And now let's go right to the 14 h steel Viking Helm, which I did try my best to uh, show y'all the damage uh, it had taken inside the helmet. However, uh, due to this leather, I don't think I can be able to do so because there is somewhat of a lump or two, but I wouldn't actually recommend this because in truth, this thing is heavy duty enough that it will be it's just too damn tough, if you ask me. So, yeah, even if I'm using that axe on it, it's not gonna go through this. However, uh, what happened in the event of me using the hatchet, what happened is I accidentally hit the top end up here and slightly nicked my blade. I was aiming for the nasal guard here, like right here actually, but I ended up going up and hitting the rivet. But you'll see me do that very soon in a while. Okay, a little bit of aftermath report. Uh, the first shot I hit was right here towards the faceplate. I was aiming for here, but I ended up going a little high and hitting a rivet. And it slightly, I don't know if y'all can see that, but it slightly got to our little axe blade, but it's an easy fix. Now, however though, the rest of the impacts to the cranial skull here, here, here and here. These would have been impressive as well with the regular blow to the cranial skull with the reinforcement. It looks like some of these rivets are about to pop out actually. Now, I bet many of you are wondering, Templar, what about this? What did the hammer do to the helmet? Well, why don't we see? Let's take a look. Okay, got to move the leather and all that. Uh, not much. I'm actually surprised about you, this is y'all, but apparently there's not that much damage inside the cranial skull. However, there is the hammer blows that we did uh, give the helmet. I don't know if I can get that in there for y'all. Because the leather's kind of getting in the way. Because yeah, it's like right here. I don't know if y'all can see that, but this thing 
did do its job, and this is heavy 14 gauge steel. So, Lord of the Bells made a, way, made a weird helmet, but at least it may know how to make it properly heavy. Do it easy enough to stop certain weapons. So, the Viking hatchet gets its seal of approval, if you ask me. Well, as you all can see, due to the fact of how the helmet is shaped, uh, this would have actually been non-workable. However, it might actually cause him some brain trauma. That's all I can best bet. But, would he be harmed? No. So far, it seems our Viking helm is still standing up to the challenge. Hmm. What to do? Hmm. Maybe I can use a Barrett 50 cal on it. <laughs> uh, but anyways guys, hopefully you like this video, like and subscribe, hopefully you like this and such. If any of y'all want me to cover any historical weapon in history, please let me know in the comments below. I will be happy to talk about it very soon. As well y'all, if any of y'all want me to get a said uh, historical equipment, please let me know in the comments below. As well y'all, if any of y'all want to buy one of these bad boys, I'll leave a link down in the descriptions area, uh, which will actually show more than one area which you can get this from. Uh, me, I got this from uh, Medieval Collectibles, so yeah. Now, all I need to do though is give this thing a little bit of sharpening and it can easily go through. Now, if any of y'all want to, well, keep it like this, which I truly recommend. This black and darkened finish is just beautiful for it, and uh, yeah, this is just beautiful. It looks like an antique, so yeah. Uh, now one thing I do have to explain to y'all, uh, majorly, is the fact that many a times over that when it comes to wearing this thing, I had to wear this in my belt, like, uh, pretty much on the side, and just pull it out, which normally that's how you normally do it, so yeah. Uh, I nearly actually nicked my hand, especially the, my left wrist, when I was moving the stuff outside, so it did not, uh, Luckily for me, I did not nick myself, so yeah, that's kind of horrifying. Uh, but, yeah. Now, I have one have to put this out here, y'all. These things are a devastating weapon in general, and if you were to get whacked with this, this is not a weapon to survive with. Now, I hear many people already down in the comments saying, Templar, you should have thrown this. Uh, no, I'm not throwing this thing. Due to the fact this did cost a lot of money, and two, because of the fact I don't want to get someone killed. And three, well, <laughs> I'm not that good of a thrower. In fact, as I also said, four, this is not a throwing axe. This is a, well, <laughs> this is a utility axe, a hatchet. So, not going to do that. But anyways, guys, hopefully see you all in the next one. Like and subscribe for more. And as well, also click the bell button for more notifications when the next video comes up. As well, y'all, also click... Uh, check out our, well, Facebook page. That way you can stay tuned for more videos and as well actually see more on the good stuff. Anyways, guys, I've been Templar. Have a great day. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.